you know, you looked, and it's hard for me to describe, but all, all that stuff they say is evidence. You look through it, and there is no evidence against anybody, me or Paul. There wasn't any time, and, and just uh, too much made up stuff. That's all I can say. It's and it's too bad that sometimes the system works that way on, on, on feelings instead of facts, you know. So, but I am relieved, and uh, I worry about my son, of course. Any Mr. message? Torres, any comments for the family, the victim's family? Yeah, I, I feel bad for him because I didn't get no answers about what happened to their daughter. And we don't know what happened to their daughter. So, and I, like I say, I feel sorry for her. What was your reaction when you learned your son was found guilty? I, I don't know. I was just holding on, that's all. Are you in a state of shock? A little bit. Mr. Misik, this is a big case for you. Is this the biggest case you've won? take it on? No, um, but it's the one I've been most um, invested in on a personal level um, because as you might remember what I said at the very beginning in this case, this man is not just not guilty, he's absolutely innocent and today's verdict proves that. So you can, you can quibble with me on the words there, but um, he never should have been charged and I'm very pleased with the outcome. Love our system of justice. Jury is what it is. The jury has absolute power to say whatever they want to say. But in this particular case, they said not guilty, and I think that's the right verdict. So, what do you plan to do for the rest of the day? What are you doing next? I don't know. We're going to Disneyland. That's what she's <laughs> don't know. I don't kidding. know. I have no idea. Just, just stop and sit. <laughs> Any message yes. to the Rio Grande community? Well, you know, I'll speak on his behalf here. It would be nice if the community would actually honor the presumption of innocence. If you go online like I do frequently or get the comments um, forwarded to me, like my phone's blowing up right now, there is just so much animosity towards this man and his family. There's so much hate, and I really have never understood it. I understand that people are upset that Kristen is missing. I understand they want a person to be responsible for that, but the, uh, just the, you know, the, 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 let's lynch them, let's burn them, let's hang them, let's kill them. I don't know where that comes from in this, in this uh, country, and I wish the community who still feels that way would uh, disabuse themselves of those feelings. So, What's your reaction just to the mixed verdicts and the fact that one jury found there was enough evidence, another found there was not? I think in this case, there's been a real lust for vengeance. I think, like I said in my closing argument, there is a reasonable inference to be drawn that Kristen might still be alive out there somewhere. They never proved her death, by the way. You'll go through the record. Um, mixed verdicts happened. This is my first dual jury trial ever, so I guess I'm surprised at, at that. but. I'm relieved at the outcome. I think it's the absolute right and just outcome, certainly the lawful outcome, so he's free to go. Mr. Flores, were you surprised when you heard the verdict read in your son's case? I don't know. It's, I don't think about it, to tell you the truth. I was just hoping, you know, it was uh, not guilty, but it, it's, it's just tough. It's really hard to say that there were but my feelings were I, mean, I was just holding on, that's all. Were you able to sleep throughout the trial? Um, most of the time, but there's a lot of nights where you're always wondering and think about this and that. But, it, it, you know, what's, uh, I, what's tough is that the Sheriff's Department for 25 years, they say she's she's buried in the back of Susan's house and they've had searches and everything. And, fine, and then they say she's buried out there and someplace else. I don't know how many places she was buried. And then I come, and then at the end, they come to my house and says, she was buried here. Well, it surprised me, you know, and says, I dug her up. I'm 80, 81 years old, you know. I, I don't do too much digging, I'll tell you, going under the, or anything, you know. It, it's just so much stuff they made up and, 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 and try to get the jury. It was about feelings. It wasn't about, uh, uh, about, uh, 
facts. It was mostly about feelings, and I think that's what happened with my son. Is, uh, they were carried away with feelings about the family and, 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 and the girl missing. Of course, everybody feels bad, you know, when, when you have a daughter missing. So, uh, but like I said before, I feel sorry for them because they didn't get no answers. Did you get a chance to talk to Paul at all? No. No, he went out. And, and I don't will, know. will you reach out to Paul? To Paul. Well, I don't know where he's going. I don't know if he's staying. Yeah, will you see him soon? They'll be in constant contact. They've been in constant contact. This is his father, of course, and, and his mother. Uh, I wasn't um, allowed to talk to him. Actually, he hasn't been in, his mom's been in con constant contact. He hasn't been allowed to speak to him because he's codependent. So, yeah, so. But after after now, he'll be able to speak to his son. So how long has it been since you spoke with your son last? Well, well I said with him next year. You know, we used to talk about football and baseball. But to have a record just a plain old... Uh, Year and a half, two years. Uh, oh, it was since a year, oh, year and April, a half. A year and a half. He was, a, he was arrested on April thirteenth, twenty twenty-one. Yeah. So. Hey, Mr. Flores, with, with your trial over, Paul's trial over, what do you do now? Go back home and yeah. do what? I, I just, I don't know. Well, I just go home and don't have to travel up and down the coast just like you guys. You know. He's got to go home. He's got to rebuild a deck that was destroyed in a search for that was ultimately fruitless. Yeah. And there's no way really to get restitution from the county for that uh, because they operated in good faith. So there's a lot of things that he needs to do, but I think primarily he just needs to rest. And he is retired. I'll try to put this a little bit behind him, but how can he do that when his son's now facing yeah. uh, a lifetime in prison? And when I say about the publicity, as the sheriffs and uh, DA do, like when they came and arrested me, I, they woke me up and I look out the door, and, and a lot of you were there, and and. And well, I mean, it was like a carnival, you know, the, the SWAT team, the FBI, the all the deputies, uh, county cars, county trucks, uh, uh, newspapers, everybody's there, you know? You ain't got a chance on, you know, what? <laughs> so what was your reaction when you were arrested? I said, for what, <laughs> you know? And they didn't tell me, they just take me, you know? And, and I didn't find out what I was arrested for until I got fingerprinted. And I asked the guy, how come you taking my DNA? And the, the deputy there told me why they're taking my DNA. I didn't know. They just take you. They don't give you much answers. I asked the deputy lady, I said, uh, who called all these people, you know, uh, uh, to come here? Well, we didn't. Well, of course they did. You know, but you go to trial or everything else, when they take you away in handcuffs and you got all, everybody there, they say that guy's guilty. You know, the neighbors think you're guilty. The, the, the pe people in the community I'm involved in different things, and you know. So, uh, do you plan on staying in Arroyo Grande, or do you plan on moving somewhere else to rebuild your life? Why or? would I move? Why? I didn't do nothing. You know, I, I moved from someplace else to there, and that's a good place to live. You know, he, I, he I built, I'm not afraid house. of anybody. You know. He built that house 31 years ago, and he's lived in it ever since, raised his family in it. Yeah. Why would he move? Again, no, no one seems to, to start from the perspective that the answer just might be innocent, that all of this conduct has been innocent, and they jump right, they just jump the gun and go right to the guilty, go right for the juggler. Sure, if he's a guilty, evil man, I wouldn't want to live next to him, I wouldn't want to represent him. But he's not a guilty, evil man. He's a kind, generous, yeah. innocent man. Anybody contact with Susan, and uh, why was she not in the courtroom? Uh, she, uh, she, she's had medical, some medical problems, and she had some doctors today. She would have been here tomorrow, but today she just couldn't make it because she. Mr. Flores, any thoughts on the podcast and the role it played in all of this? Uh, yeah, a lot, but I don't have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's. Some of the things that were go out and find witnesses or stuff or make up things or get them going, I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to describe. You have to sit down and think about it and write down things. But uh, it, it, there's been a lot of bad stuff written, even, even in, the, in your newspaper there, the, uh, the editorial. Uh, they didn't do me no favors <laughs> the, of, the, of the telegram, you know. But everybody wants somebody, you know, they want to hang somebody, everybody, you know, so. I, so like I said, I'm glad it's over and I've had some people that doubted me or, 
they, you know, uh, uh, they feel, but I don't see a lot of changes because people didn't get no answers, like I said before. So they still want answers, a lot of people, you know? So, like I say, they're still probably, tomorrow they'll be probably going by Susan Southern, blowing a horn, or they'll be driving by my house, you know, just people, you know, they, they believe everything they read and everything they hear, or, you know? Uh, me, I got a flip phone. I don't listen to any of that stuff, you know? I don't know anything about what goes on, but the people that are on there every day, and, and they just get wound up, wound up, and, you know, they're gonna hang somebody, you know? And so, you know, like I said, I mean, I just had not have much time to think about the questions and answers. I wasn't prepared for this. So as essentially as you're processing. your son's attorney filing in the bill? I, 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 they're talking about it. That's between them. I, I don't know. I haven't talked about anything. I just found out. <laughs> in court, what, you know, so. What has been the most challenging part for you during this time, and how did you overcome it? I just hang in there and don't worry about it. I, I know where I stood. You know, I'm always a good guy. You know, I'm an active in community affairs, and, and, and I always coach kids and, and like I've been an elk here 20 years you know I'm, I'm at the Moose Lodge and coach soccer and Little League and I've always been a good guy you know and then, and then they throw a curve at you one day and it, it's going to take a while to get over it, but I'm 81 so how long am I going to worry about it <laughs> <laughs> it's also important I think to note that he's been wearing an ankle monitor since his release on bail April 15th? A year and a half. A year and a half ago. Uh -huh. So he has, and maybe this will uh, uh, satiate the uh, mob a little bit. Um, he has served what would have been his full sentence if he had been found guilty. So in my opinion, he still would have been released today even if he was found guilty because he has spent more than 18 months on an ankle monitor. You double that for conduct credit. Maximum sentence is three years. So this was kind of a anticlimactic, but I'm glad he got the not guilty. Yeah. Have you heard from Susan? And, and has, has she Susan's got. The, she's a. I'm sure she knows about the verdicts. Everybody in the world seems to. Yeah, I haven't uh, had a chance to call her, but yeah, but we'll talk to her soon. Yeah, I'll call her in a minute. And it is very likely that Paul's attorney will uh, file a motion for a new trial. There's several grounds, so you could probably expect that from Mr. Sang. Is there anything in particular that you think I was don't really... want to comment on that too. No, 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 not on the appeal. But oh. in your case, with the verdict, do you think there? What do you think was the strongest evidence, or what really swayed so, the jury? So, and you you saw this, and you a lot of your comment commentators mentioned this. The funny thing about this case was, for the more serious charges, they had zero, zero physical evidence. They had the dog alert, right, and they, the coincidence of being the last one maybe to have seen her. Obviously, somebody else saw her after him. In my client's case, they alleged they had biological evidence. And um, if the jury had found that sufficient, they would have found him guilty. So I'm very thankful the jury did not believe that the alleged blood evidence and the alleged bodily fluid evidence was, in fact, evidence of anything. I think they believed our version of it, which if it was evidence of anything, it was certainly doubtful what it meant. And so I'm very pleased that this jury was uh, diligent. They were uh, committed. Uh, they showed up every day. They, just, they were fantastic. And I got to say, I was surprised because telling Ruben this yesterday, when they walked in with the verdict yesterday, they wouldn't look at, look at us. So I was really a little nervous about today. Didn't look at us again today, but then they ruled the right way. Yeah. So. As an attorney, do you think the, the finding for the dad is a defense for the son on appeal? Yes, certainly. Because again, the, the prosecution's theory, although they, you know, there's been several theories. The prosecution's theory is that the body was taken the night that, or the day after, night after she died and, and buried at his house. And my jury didn't believe that, so certainly, Juries are finders of fact. So that's a fact that the jury has determined. There was nobody buried there, they wouldn't have found him not guilty. Yeah, it's important to his defense. It's important to his appeal. 
Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you.